All right. Hello, everybody, again, and welcome to the session on resume and interview skills, do's and don'ts. Um, this is Chris, and uh, she is a clinical manager at Hanger Clinic, um, and she also does a lot of cool stuff like uh, whipped creams for um, is that triathlons and things. Yeah, <laughs> paratriathlon <laughs> coaching and bike fitting. So perfect. Yes. This is what Chris gave me a little bit of a intro, but <laughs> all right, um, go ahead and take it from here. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Feel free to contact me, um, whether via LinkedIn or so. So why am I here? Um, I have been a residency director for many years. Um, I worked with a private company for over four years where I was their residency director and did every single initial interview um, for any resume that came across my desk. Um, some of the interviews were amazing, some were not so good, and sometimes that was my fault too. So I've learned a lot over the years and just want to share some tips and tricks and how you can stand out as you go through the entire residency process. Um, so disclaimer, I only speak for myself. I do not speak for any of the companies that I currently work for or have worked for in the past. So if you're graduating uh, this spring, you should start learning now. I know by now that you're very familiar with OP ResCast and NCOPE. Um, so we'll move on from there. But when you write a resume and you submit it, you're being judged within 10 seconds. Um, so you really have to make sure that your resume has really easy to find information. I can hit, or any other director can hit the highlights very quickly. Um, you have a very balanced layout, so it's not incredibly cluttered and we're playing hide and seek. Um, and have the entire resume, whether it's one or two pages, formatted the same. Um, I have no problem with two page resumes as long as the content is deemed necessary. Okay. Um, so I want to see some highlights in there. I want to know what you're doing with your career. I don't want it to read like a job description. Um, also, any error will jump out at us. And that's when I go, oh, do you really have attention to detail? Um, and it could just be a simple mistake. So it's really good just to review it um, and we'll go over how to do that. Um, cover letters. Not everyone puts in a cover letter. I personally like them. That's uh, my preference because it's your highlighter. You get to talk to me directly, not just the like the uh, resume that you hand out to everybody, um, and really show me why you stand out. Um, generic cover letters are very, very obvious, especially when you send a cover letter um, to another company and then send it to me, which actually happened a fair amount. Um, it would be like, I'm really excited at the very end. And thank you for reading this. I'm really excited to work at Joe Schmo's o &P. And I'm like, that's not me. So again, attention to detail, showing me why you want to work for me, because then I can show you why I want you as well. Because um, it's, you know, we are trying to um, feel each other out. So let's see. Um, your resume, it's really about the content. If you're going to put a lot of filler there and have a five-page resume, it's not worth it. Um, <laughs> yep. Um, personal email, kdesjardinscpo at gmail.com or reach out through LinkedIn. Um, so resume, um, the content, you need to have a header. You do not necessarily have to have an objective because basically everyone's objective is to get a residency. So don't use the valuable space unless you have something important to say. Um, put your education first. I want to know where you went to school. That's going to help me know where you were trained. Um, put any experience down, your qualifications and skills, and it's uh, better to list some references. Um, as far as experience goes, getting to say, um, I worked on a really cool project, absolutely put it there. If you say, I took um, biomechanics, lower limb prosthetics. Everybody does that. So don't add filler. Okay. Um, so let's talk about a clean layout. This is actually 
my resume, it is a little bit out of date, but kind of bear with me. First thing, when you look at, everything looks kind of the same. You can see um, each section. You can see the margins are all the same. Um, the fonts are all the same. Um, so to kind of get into it with your header, you want your full name or your nickname, whatever you choose to use, the ways to contact you. And that's my personal email address right there. Feel free to copy it down. Um, put public information. I do not need to know your specific address. Please don't send out your home address on these. That happens often. And you're going to get those nosy Nellies who are going to be Googling where you live and checking out your house on Zillow. So don't do that. Um, and then use a professional sounding email. Um, first name, last name, something, uh, something that you know is yours when I have to go into Outlook and search for you later based on our communications. Um, I have had the craziest email addresses show up, especially the ones that I know that you made when you were 12 and you're still using. So um, keep that. Um, as far as references, I usually like to have like just three or so. It's probably what you're going to need. Um, but again, let them know that you're asking them to are listing them as a reference. We don't want any surprises, um, especially if you think they're going to give you a good reference and they don't because that's a nasty surprise. Um, so education, your school degree graduation date. Um, you, your GPA, sometimes it can hurt you if it's pretty low. So only put it there if you feel like it's adding to your resume. Um, put all your colleges. You do not necessarily need to put your high school unless, again, you're trying to share something um, that's really unique about it. Um, do not, I, I would not put a CPO in your email um, <laughs> for your CPO. <laughs> um, and thank you, Shree. I appreciate the, uh, the links for resume building. That's awesome. Um, so you can see, I also listed my, um, the hours I did at Newington, I listed the locations and the clinical and technical affiliations there. Um, so let's see, your experience. You wanna put your, your job title at whatever company that you're in. Um, you wanna describe your job duties and what you did for them without making it look like an ad, okay? Um, you also wanna use uh, really active words. We created this new design. I volunteered at X, Y, and Z. I invented this. Um, a lot of times I see, I worked at this location and we worked to build a prosthesis. And it's very, uh, it's just the same thing and nothing jumps out at you. Um, you really want to use this to brag about yourself. Now, don't exaggerate. I've had people be like, I took the lead on seven AKs and I'm like, based on your dates, that was your second week at work. <laughs> so um, figure out how you want to list that. But um, you do want to demonstrate how versatile you are. Um, for example, in the red box, I was responsible for developing an annual business plan and implemented strategies to meet and exceed revenue targets. In 2019, increased revenue um, by over $100,000 while increasing prosthetic prescriptions by 4%, orthotic prescriptions by 8%. I do not expect to see that with the student, okay? But just kind of keep that in mind for what you want to do in the future. Um, once you are a resident, if you did do some marketing and build something as part of your residency, that's awesome. That's bonus. But record it. Make sure you add it to your resume and be building your resume constantly. You don't want to be a year or two in and then going, wait, what did I do those years ago? So keep a running tab, um, even if you have to then reformat it when you're ready to use it. Um, I did not have previous experience in O&P before I entered school myself. Um, I used work experience in internships that I did in research labs um, and other um, jobs that showed customer service, that I was able to work with people. Um, I did not necessarily put that I was an ice cream scooper back in high school, but um, you can take a 
um, like a server job. Back when I used to have that, I worked in the restaurant field. But again, I was able to manage money. I was able to multitask. And I kind of pulled all that apart and then listed a couple things that I did. I did not make that a huge section. Um, clinical hours for school in our resume, I actually look for them. You can put them under experience. It depends how you want to format yours. Um, I put mine, because I'm so far removed, um, as the location underneath school as like a subsection. So, because it was all entwined while I was in school. So, um, and even if they're unpaid, that's fine. You did, your, you were an intern at this company. Um, you were a volunteer at this company. And then say a little bit about what you did. If you were more spinal and orthotic focused, write that. Don't necessarily, um, again, say you were lead on a case, but go ahead and list what you did. Um, it's just, it's being accurately creative with how you describe it, okay? Um, be memorable. Um, so part of what I do, I'm a bike fitter and um, a running coach and a paratriathlon coach. So I list that on my resume even right now because I actually have used some of those skills in my day-to-day -day jobs. Um, and then list skills that I have. Um, so you can kind of take a screenshot and maybe use something kind of like that in yours. Again, what's appropriate for that. Um, but you do also want to be able to be called out on this. You want to have someone go, oh, you're on the fellows committee. What do you do for them? Instead of, hey, I show up to a once a month meeting. I can say I've implemented the first fellow Friday program or something along those lines. Um, note to self, those are free. First Friday, that was a shameless plug. Sorry. Uh, so, um, note on skills, you're showing your skills when you write your resume. So attention to detail, you want to make sure everything is lined up. You want to, um, be consistent with how you put, um, so you can see nothing here is lined that right there. If you put attention to detail and I noticed this, that's not attention to detail in something that's your first impression. So what am I going to think your clinical notes are going to look like? And I know that's me projecting, but that's the first, you know, minute or two that I know you. So you are very unique. You do a unique capstone project. You've done uh, trips with romp. You've had an uncommon patient experience um, of an upper extremity that you were able to sit in on or work with. Um, when I was a resident looking for a position, I had built the K-Chafe, so mine was on there. Um, just give me something to talk to you about. If it looks like I can put your resume next to one of um, someone else who's looking for the same job, and I can't tell you guys apart based on your resume, you did not make yourself stand out, okay? So just be unique. I know you're unique, so show me. So uh, the references, um, again, um, you can put things in your clinical experience that you worked with so-and-so without listing them as a specific reference later on. Um, for example, someone listed that they worked with Lindy um, over at the University of Hartford. Cool. I have met her. I might call her up and say, hey, did you know so-and-so? Even if that person did not list them as a, as a reference, you put their name on there. So one, it's great to get to work with uh, certain individuals within our industry, but just know that we might pick up the phone um, and give them a call and see how working with you was. Okay, um, check your spelling. Those red lines that you see in Word, they're your friends. Um, you wanna verify names and organizations. You wanna check all your emails, all your correspondence. Um, anything that you send out, please verify. One of the things that I have learned to do when I send an email is I do not add the person's email address until I've attached everything, I've listed everything down, I've put a subject line in, and then I put their um, email in there. Because I have accidentally sent too many incomplete emails and that makes me look awesome. So don't be me. So um, these are some examples that I have pulled from actual resumes that I have received. Um, you can see on the left, those are, you see my name is completely spelled wrong. 
You see the company names have been spelled wrong. Um, you see information listed. I'm looking forward to rotating through all six regional offices in Maryland. Uh, we only had three uh, uh, in Maryland, and it was very clear on our website. So now that shows me that you did not actually read the website. Um, I love the, I'm excited to work at Walter Reed. I would be too, but that's not me. <laughs> so don't put it in your cover letter, okay? So um, this is what I do to resumes when I get it. I take highlighters, I make notes. Um, this is before I even contact you, okay? Um, so I might say, hey, that's a really cool thing to look at. Um, or to discuss or tell me more about something. So I remind myself before I even get in front in front of you. Um, so these are some other resumes that I've had permission to put up. Um, this particular person put a really big objective that was super vague. Um, they listed their contact information. They put a single job that had really no description of what the job was. Um, they listed a bunch of skills, which is great. And then their education was at the bottom. And that was it. There was nothing that really made this person stand out except for that their resume was bare. And there wasn't enough content. It was really just a skeleton, okay? So it's not gonna stand out. Um, this one, this one I adore because I've, I've spoken to the person who had this. Uh, this particular individual is amazing. It's coming from a liberal arts background into the ONP. This is what they did. <laughs> um, and it was super cute. However, it was really hard to find what I was looking for. Um, and they uh, listed their employment history later on. Again, there was a second career. Um, but they had all these presentations that they did at conferences. Everything caught my attention. They uh, listed funding, really cool scholarship that they received. But again, it was... Uh, it just was not a very professional layout and it was really hard to find out. So it was just very overwhelming. Um, although I was really disappointed that it was not uh, scented. Again, I do love the movie Legally Blonde, but I'm a lot older than a lot of you guys. So um, anyway, resumes, clean and easy. Ask people to review it. Um, check your file names. <laughs> um, make sure that you save it. I do K Desjardins and then I might put a date in there um, or who I'm sending it to, because you can tailor your resume to the individual organization you're sending it, not just your cover letter. Um, verify the attachments. I had someone send in their application to become a neuropath um, to apply to their school. And I was like, that's not to me. Um, save it as a PDF, so that way the formatting comes along correctly. Um, it's a very small field. You want to make sure that you are polite and memorable in a good way. Um, so that way you maintain a really good um, professional reputation. So, um, you can send a thank you note. You don't have to. I always thought it was really cool when someone reminded me, especially if I'm sitting there and doing, you know, 10 little interviews or reading 10 resumes that day, um, that they, uh, the send thank you note. So this is also pay attention. I screwed up. That should be at the end. So <laughs> bear with me. Um, Put your capstones. You can actually put capstone or special projects or something um, as a section, or if it works better for your resume to um, put it under your education or experience. It really depends on how you want to draw attention to it. Um, I do like seeing it independent if the project is something you really, really want to talk about. Um, if it's listed some like under something else, sometimes it doesn't draw attention. So you could easily put capstone project um, and then experiences or something like that. Just see how it all flows and have a couple people review your formatting for that. Um, so social media, lock it down now, okay? Especially with how polarized our country might be. Um, you never know who's gonna be looking at your social media from a company, okay? Um, so really just lock everything down there. Um, I am absolutely almost done. Um, let's see, applications, um, go through OP Rescast. Do not email the CEO when everyone's site says you have to go through um, OP Rescast. 
Um, read the directions, follow the directions, because you will stand out in a negative way. Um, permanent city or current city? Um, it depends. It really, I usually ask where you are now, um, unless you want to put permanent city because that's where you want to, that's where you're interviewing at. You can put that there. Um, if you get the interview, please um, make sure you go over how long is it going to be? When is it? What time zone is it? Are they calling you? Are you calling them? Um, get on early. Verify that you have um, go to, to connect or whatever um, downloaded. Um, you basically have five seconds to make a good first impression. Um, dress as you would as an in-person interview. Be present. Look at the webcam. Create um, your presence, but still be yourself, okay? When someone um, is referring to their resume, I know they don't know their resume. If you are checking your cell phone, you're not staying engaged. Um, that interview, the interviewer probably um, booked a uh, couple hours just to do interviews back to back to back. So again, make sure you stand out and are memorable. Um, a lot of interviews have been online lately, or at least an initial interview, kind of like a screening interview. You may only have 15 minutes to speak to the initial interviewer. Um, when I was working with my last company, I would do a 15 minute meet and greet interview, and then I would send people up to my executive team who then would decide if um, they wanted to do something uh, online or in person. So you never really know. So um, let's see, almost, almost done here. Um, set up your space in advance. Make sure that you're pretty clear in the back. You don't have anything embarrassing behind you. Check your tech. Um, this is often my setup. I have something crazy going on. It doesn't matter. You don't see it, okay? Because I'm bringing my computer up, my laptop up to me. Um, my background is fairly clean. I've had people do interviews and they have dirty laundry sitting next to them. I've had people do interviews in closets so they can get away from their kids and they made it into a professional space. They just, we kind of joked about it later. Um, if you're, if you, if I constantly see a little light shining up, I know you're playing with your cell phone. Um, so just make sure to set your space up. Um, also, if you have a webcam at the bottom of your laptop, it will shoot up your nose. Please make sure to check your lighting and to pre-check your video. Um, be very flexible and remain polite. One of the worst things I've ever done is I screwed up and I called a candidate an hour before the interview because he was in another time zone and that was my fault. Um, he was polite, courteous. We went ahead and um, went back and uh, went back to our regularly scheduled appointment time. He impressed me so much with how he handled being interrupted with his day um, in a super professional manner. So, and he ended up actually getting the job. So be yourself, stay focused and engaged. Don't do casual Zoom calls. We are all so used to doing uh, Zoom and family talk where we're all over the place, walking around. Don't do that. Pretend you're in person. Um, and that is really it. Congratulations on getting this far, and we're really looking forward to seeing you out in the field.